So this has been a series of lectures on what happens if we have a potential barrier where it has a constant potential V0 and it has a potential 0 on the other side. So we conveniently made it symmetric such that you now have a, um, a incident wave function. You have a reflected wave function and you have a transmitted wave function going in this direction. But that was for the case where the total energy was greater than the barrier. So you can imagine classically that if you had this wave, this water wave that came along, and if it hit the barrier, then you know the wave is coming in this way, it bounces off and reflects back this way, but if, it, if the wave is taller than it, then you're also going to get some sort of transmission where the wave now is going to wash over the top of the barrier. But now we want to consider the case of what happens if our energy is less than the barrier. Classically, I shouldn't get anything to transmit. If, if my wave hits a wall, it's going to bounce off. It's not going to go through the wall. But in quantum mechanics, we have to consider something a little differently. So let's, cons let's look at region 2. This was region 1. This is region 2. So let's take a look in region 2 and look at the possibilities, what happens with the Schrodinger equation. So what we get is the Schrodinger equation told us that the wave function on side 2 was equal to, was well, we worked it out such that you got this equation here. So we wrote it out as a second order differential equation. But now E0 is less than V0. And so then what you get is a solution of a normalization constant E to the minus kappa x plus d e to the positive kappa x, where kappa is now um, 2m v0 minus e0 over h bar squared. <clears throat> okay, so essentially what you get is an exponential decay and an exponential growth. Now, we want all wave functions to go to zero at infinity, so that means we have to set d equal to zero, or else you'll get this exponential growth, which will just go to infinity. Okay, so we automatically set that, so therefore our transmission um, wave function is going to be c e to the minus kappa. So therefore, we're going to get a wave function at the barrier, which is now going to decay exponentially away. Um, <clears throat> so now, um, one, this is interesting, because now I have wave function inside the barrier. So again, this is an energy. I'm not talking about a physical quantity. But it also means that, you know, if, it, if we did have a physical quantity, like a particle bouncing off of a wall, if I take a baseball and bounce it off the wall, classical mechanics says the baseball hits the wall, bounces back, and um, is reflected. Quantum mechanics says that there's a possibility that the wave function of the baseball is inside the wall, and therefore there is a chance that it actually is going to be there, inside the wall, a probability that it's going to be inside the wall. So the baseball leaves the room and then goes into the wall. It's there. So let's work this out now more closely. Um, let's work on the boundary conditions. So the boundary condition of 1 at x equals 0 should be equal to the boundary condition 2 at x equals 0. And that is a0 e, no not 0, a times e to the um, 0 plus b e to the 0 
is equal to C e to the 0. So A plus B is equal to C, just like it was before. Now if we look at the first derivative, evaluated x equals 0 in both cases, both regions, then what we have is i k 0 a e to the 0 plus or not plus minus i k 0 b e to the 0 is equal to minus kappa c e to the 0. So now we get i k 0 a minus b is equal to minus kappa c <clears throat> and so a minus b is equal to uh, minus kappa i k0 times c. <clears throat> okay, so now if we subtract the first boundary condition from the second boundary, or we add, sorry, if we add the first boundary condition and the second boundary condition, we get 2a is equal to c 1 minus kappa over i k0, <clears throat> um, which I can now um, write as uh, uh, a is equal to well, I solve for C. Well, let me rewrite this. 2A is equal to C I K0 minus kappa over I K0. <clears throat> um, and uh, Let's see, and so therefore I should get for C 2A I K0 over I K0 minus kappa. Okay. <clears throat> um, now let's put this value into um, the normalization constant for B. <clears throat> so before we said that a plus b is equal to c. So um, if we do that, then we have b is equal to c minus a or 2a i k0 over i k0 minus kappa minus a. So we try and clean this up a little bit. Um, we get 2a i k 0 minus a i k 0 plus kappa over i k 0 minus kappa and so now we have a um, times a so we can factor out the a and we get i k 0 plus kappa over i k 0 minus kappa <clears throat> and so now we can formulate A over B, which is I K0 plus kappa over I K0 minus kappa. And if we want to calculate the reflection coefficient, we square it. Which would be I K0 plus kappa over I K0 minus kappa, quantity squared. But really, when we're squaring it, we're taking the complex conjugate and multiplying it. And so when we do that, we get I K0 plus kappa times minus I K0 plus kappa divided by I K0 minus kappa times uh, minus I K0 minus kappa. <clears throat> okay, so now we multiply through. 
we get minus i squared, so that's minus a minus one, that's a positive. So we get k zero squared plus kappa squared over k zero squared plus kappa squared. Or I get a reflection coefficient of one. So that means that all of my wave function is reflected. <clears throat> um, and now if I calculate my transmission, I get a transmission coefficient of zero. So what is this telling me? What is my interpretation? Well, my interpretation is that everything is reflected and nothing is transmitted. So if I again draw my barrier, then I have my incident particle coming in, hitting this, and then reflecting back with a wave function And that's going to happen 100% of the time. What happens in here? I have zero probability um, that it is inside the, the um, barrier. But then I just said at the beginning that, wait a minute, the wave function for the transmitted particle still exists inside the barrier. So what's going on here? And so this leads us back to our interpretations in quantum mechanics, which says that the um, what we're observing, what we're measuring, is the probability. We're measuring the probability of something, not the wave function. So the wave function can exist inside the barrier, and that wave function is not going to be a wave, but it's going to be an exponential that drops off right here. So what, what the transmission coefficient is telling us is that we'll never be able to measure the particle inside the barrier. We can never measure it inside there. It exists, but we can't measure it. If we tried to measure it, it would give us some, an answer of zero. If we measured anything, we'd measure the probability that the particle is reflected, and we would get an answer that is reflected 100% of the time. So this is an interesting interpretation that we know that there's an incident particle. We know that it, if it doesn't have enough energy to be over the barrier, doesn't have enough kinetic energy to go over the barrier, then it's going to, um, uh, then it's going to reflect and it's going to reflect 100% of the time. <clears throat> but if it goes through, then there is a chance it will go through. And how will I be able to measure it? I have to measure it outside the barrier. And so instead, what you get is you get a particle that comes in, that's incident, a particle that reflects and goes back, wave function that exponentially decays, and then you have a transmitted particle on the other side. If it's a finite size barrier, there's a chance it's gonna get through. The probability decreases the wider this barrier is because the exponential decay goes down and down and down. But what we found is that um, it is going to uh, decrease. So if I make the barrier a certain length, then there is a small probability that it's going to get through on the other side. So it's going to teleport itself from one side of the barrier to the other. And that's the great thing about quantum mechanical tunneling. The particle is never inside the barrier. It's always going to be on the left or the right, but there's a chance that it's going to jump instantaneously on the other side of the barrier.